Hey guys, I'm Pete Mundo. We're Heartland College Sports Weekly, part of heartlandcollegesports.com, your independent Big 12 digital media outlet. We're coming to you live on Facebook Live. We're on Periscope. We'll be on YouTube, of course, on the podcast later today as well. And don't forget, if you're on the podcast, leave us a rating and a review. And guess what? We're going to have free koozies for you. Just leave that rating and review and then send me a screenshot to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com, and we've got free koozies coming your way. Um, And also, don't forget, we're brought to you by mybookie.com. With the promo code BIG12, you can get a 100% sign-up bonus, so don't miss out on that. Promo code BIG12 at (laughs) mybookie.com. On Periscope, how's the weather? I'm in Kansas City, and it feels like summer today in Kansas City. I'll tell you that right now. It uh, It is not a beautiful fall October Kansas City day. I'm sick of summer and we still have it right now in Kansas City hence the shorts and the t-shirt so let's get to the games from yesterday and let's start off of course with the Red River rivalry uh, Oklahoma taken down Texas by a final of 53 to 45 in quadruple overtime unbelievable this game was 31 17 before Texas scored on those two touchdowns at the end of the game to send this one to overtime and As I'm thinking through this game and thinking about this game, uh, first off, a couple of tidbits for you. It's the highest scoring game in Red River rivalry history. First four overtime games for both of these teams. And now OU has won five of the past six against Texas. Both teams had mistakes in this game, right? But Texas had more mistakes than Oklahoma. And that's what this game came down to. And when you're Tom Herman and you're coming into this game with the more veteran team, a senior quarterback going up against a redshirt freshman quarterback and a ton of young guys, OU doesn't rebuild, it reloads, but by OU standards, this is still a rebuild. If you go out there as as Tom Herman and your team makes more mistakes than the OU team that is full of young players led by a redshirt freshman quarterback, that's on you. There's no other way to put it. There's no sugarcoating it for Tom Herman. That's on you. And it was on Tom Herman. I mean, I'm just thinking about some little things, right? Right before the half, right before the half, Tom Herman and the Longhorns have a false start in the offensive line that forces them from a field goal to a punt. That is a big momentum shift going into halftime, you know, being tied versus being down especially when you're going up against a young Oklahoma team. I know that's not like the play that changed the game, but that's just one of the mo- those moments that I think to in that game between OU and Texas on Saturday. And I say it's those little things, those little things that can make all the difference in the world. Uh, and Tom Herman with his Texas team is not the kind of team that should be making those mistakes. Yet here he was before halftime going into halftime And he's doing false starts on the offensive line for his guys. And people will say, well, it wasn't Tom Herman doing that. It all reflects back on Tom Herman. All right? It does. Early in this game, early in this game, Texas forced OU into an interception and a fumble and a fumble on three straight drives. And they couldn't capitalize. It was still a 10-10 game after you force a young Oklahoma team into three straight drives that end up in an interception, a fumble, and a fumble. And then OU goes up 17-10 on the next drive. So people are going to talk about overtime, and we'll talk about the craziness of overtime. But still, that's where the game was lost. The game was lost early for Texas. They couldn't capitalize against a young team on three straight drives where you've got them on their heels going interception, fumble, fumble. And I thought OU sealed the deal in that third quarter drive where they went 17 plays for 87 yards. They go up 14 points, 10 rushes on that drive. I thought that sealed the game. Of course, it didn't. Uh, But Texas, once again, needs a wild, wild comeback to then get it to overtime to try to have a chance to win. And I think to overtime, of course, you had the blocked field goal by Perrion Winfrey uh, in the defensive tackle spot. And he's becoming a nice player on that D-line for OU, is he not? Uh, Really impressed. Of course, then, uh, then OU misses the field goal as well. So you think about the fact that, you know, theoretically, Texas makes a field goal doesn't let a field goal be blocked, and maybe Texas comes out of this game with a win. But no, it's OU coming out with the win in the Red River rivalry, 53-45 to on Periscope. Uh, Pete, is Tom Herman on the hot seat, or does he get a pass this year? I don't know if you ever get a pass at Texas, but the unique nature 
of 2020, uh, what's going on with COVID, you know, social justice, all these different things. I don't think Tom Herman's getting fired this year, no matter what happens. First off, the budgets for these athletic departments are are in real trouble. Uh, you know, they don't have tens of millions of dollars to just dump out there and throw to a guy to say, go away. And Chris Del Conte is not the kind of guy that fires his coaches. We talked to Justin Wells of Inside Texas uh, this past week about it, and they do a great job, by the way, at InsideTexas.com. And he said Chris Del Conte is not the kind of guy that wants to fire his head coaches. He wants to give his coaches opportunities to win and put them in positions to win. Herman's got his two new coordinators. I think he gets to 2021. I mean, barring something unforeseen, like a two and seven year for Texas, I don't see how Herman gets fired this year. Between the budget issues, the unique nature of 2020, I'd be shocked. I'd be completely shocked. But certainly he shouldn't feel good about things, right? Think about Texas. Texas is a recovered onside kick against Texas Tech away from being 0 3. Now, you can flip that and you can say, if Keontae Ingram doesn't fumble at the end of the game against TCU, and if Dicker hits his field goal, it doesn't get blocked yesterday in the third overtime, and then OU misses the field goal, then you could say Texas is also two plays away from being 4-0 and 3-0 in the Big 12. But when you've got the senior quarterback in Sam Ellinger, four-year starter, and you don't get the plays to bounce your way. And frankly, it shouldn't have come down to some of those plays. If you were more disciplined and you took care of business early on, it wouldn't come down to some of these little plays for Texas. They would be a okay, but they couldn't do it. And they have not been able to do it. And there's no other way to put it outside of that as a reflection on the coaching staff and the head coach. There's no doubt about it right now for Tom Herman. Uh, what do we have? Alvin, Texas allowing 142 points in three conference games, 49-plus points per game. A little skewed because you had the four-overtime game yesterday, but uh, still, yes, that's that's a good point there. Good point. Tim writes, uh, OU punished Texas where it counted in the trenches. OU was better. I'll add OU in the last four minutes was frustrating. OU was, was by far the better team, but allowed Texas to score two quick ones. OU's defense looked awesome. OU self-inflicted on the first pick and the pledger fumble. OU should have won big looking back. Texas scored 10 points off turnovers. That is uh, that is true. Let's also touch on the OU benching of Spencer Rattler there for Tanner Mordecai. I didn't mind that. You know, I, I think that Rattler, yes, stud prospect, but I'm okay if a guy's not getting the job done, even if he's a redshirt freshman and you've got all your hopes and dreams in him, bring him down to earth a little bit, all right? I, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Now, clearly, Rattler's the better player. And once he got back in the game and placed a Mordecai, he allowed the game to come to him. He took what was available. It reminded me, and I'm not saying he is Kyler Murray, but Murray would, would roll out. He'd say, you know what? I got 10 yards up the left side here. I'll pop out of bounds. That's what he would do. You saw Rattler do that once he got in the game yesterday after the benching um, in favor of Tanner Mordecai. So I, I thought that Rattler coming back in the game was just what he needed. And I think Riley was smart there to say, hey, you know what? Take a seat. Think about it. You know, you're not going to lose this job. I don't think there's a quarterback issue at OU or a quarterback battle at OU. But I had no problem with that whatsoever. And by the way, I know there's a lot of love for Sam Ellinger after the game for Texas, but let me add this. Um, Sam Ellinger missed a lot of throws yesterday, a lot of throws. I mean, people are always like, oh, this Ellinger carries the team on his back. Oh, my goodness, this guy's unbelievable. And, yes, he's a great leader and a really good player. But he missed a, a, quite a few throws that could have changed that game for Texas, and that's on him. He's a great runner. But a part of me thinks that Mike Yurcich is trying to run, in some cases, the offense that he had at Oklahoma State. And Ellinger, you know, he doesn't have the accuracy down the field of a Mason Rudolph at Oklahoma State where Mike Yurcich was the offensive coordinator. So, I, you know, I just um, – I'm watching that play out, and it's, it's a really interesting time for Texas. Really interesting time. Pete, totally agree on Ellinger. Yeah, he, he missed some big throws. By the way, guys on Facebook Live, let me know if you lose me here when I bounce through a couple of screens. If you've lost me right now on Facebook Live, let me know. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just bouncing around through some uh, notes that I have from yesterday. I'm Pete Mundo. If you're just joining us on Facebook Live or Periscope or Heartland College Sports Weekly, heartlandcollegesports.com is the show.
Uh, we're brought to you by MyBookie.com. Use the promo code BIG12 for a 100% sign-up bonus. Our picks, by the way, are 14 and 4 against the spread. We went 2 and 1 yesterday, hit the OU minus 2.5. Uh, we hit K State plus 8.5, and, and we missed out on Texas Tech and Iowa State. And let's go there to the Texas Tech Iowa State game. Already getting questions about Brees Hall and the Heisman Trophy. I'm pumping those breaks, all right? I love Brees Hall. Yesterday, 27 carries, 135 yards, two scores. Right now, best quarterback or best running back in the Big 12 is Brees Hall, all right? Sorry, Oklahoma State fans, but it's Brees Hall right now. He is just unbelievable. And what I love about him is, is his patience and his vision. Watching Brees Hall... He is like a savvy veteran. He waits for the gaps to open up. He hits the gaps. He's got patience. He's got vision. He sees the holes. Boy, he is just fun. He is just so fun to watch. And the fact that, you know, Matt Campbell was able to get this guy to Iowa State is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. I love watching this dude play on Saturdays. Just unbelievable. Um, so yesterday, Iowa State beating Texas Tech 31-15. to Brock Purdy is spreading that ball around. Xavier Hutchinson, nine catches. Uh, the tight ends, Kohler and Allen, seven catches combined. And while there's not that Allen Lazard at wide receiver for this team, at least not yet, uh, you can say it's Charlie Kohler at tight end. But Purdy is getting more comfortable with his options at wide receiver and tight end. He's spreading it around beautifully. And Iowa State's offense scoring drives of nine plays, 13 plays, 12 plays, and 11 plays. Uh, the offense is starting to click under Tom Manning and Brock Purdy. And, you know, that week one disaster against Louisiana. Think about it. If Iowa State wins that game, it's a top 10 team right now. I, I mean, they're probably ranked 10th in the country, 9th or 10th in the country. And that's just got to burn you if you're an Iowa State fan. Now, you know, I've heard from many of you this week, and I guess we found out uh, a couple of weeks before the season started, Iowa State had a lot of guys missing practice because of contact tracing from COVID and everything else. We should throw that game out the window. I I'm with you there. I'm with you there, right? But that's, that's just not how it works. It's not. Iowa State can win a Big 12 title. They can play for a Big 12 championship. But... Uh, uh, you still have the Louisiana loss in the resume, and you can't take that off there. I know that contact tracing and whatnot may have slowed you down in practice, but, uh, you know, everybody was dealing with COVID. You weren't the only team dealing with it. So I, I love Iowa State, and they can do big things, but unbelievable, unbelievable to think that this team is a, a win over a, a Louisiana Lafayette away from being a top-10 team. That's going to burn them. That's got to really burn him. Iowa State, by the way, is now 12-1 and in October since 2017. Uh, too bad they've got to buy this week. You know, Iowa State should make sure that if they can do anything with the Big 12 schedule, no bye weeks in October, okay? No. Give us a bye week at the end of September. Give me a bye week in the first week of November. No bye weeks in October. 12-1 and since 2017 in the month of October. So Brocktober and, and Matt Campbell's unbelievable roll through this month uh, continues after yesterday's win against Texas Tech. Speaking of Texas Tech, uh, this is a, a bad loss for Tech. If not for that blocked um, field goal return for a touchdown to open up the game, this is like a 40-10 to 10 game. You know, 31-15, you look at the box score and you're like, oh, okay, I guess it was kind of close. If you watch this game, it was never close. It was a boring game. Uh, Tech, you know, it was really a, it felt like a 40 to 10 game. I know it was a whatever, 16 point spread, but it felt like a double that is how this game played out. And now you got to wonder, is there a quarterback battle at Texas Tech? And frankly, I have no problem with there being a quarterback battle at Texas Tech. Alan Bowman, whether it's injuries or just maybe not loving the system of Matt Wells and David Yost as much as he loved the system of Cliff Kingsbury, he has not been the same quarterback since Cliff Kingsbury left this program. He, he just hasn't. I mean, there was a play yesterday. I'm watching him. It's a, was it a third or fourth and short? You know, the game's basically out of reach, almost out of reach at that point. And Bowman shoots it down the right sideline towards the end zone. He overthrew his guy by almost 10 yards. Almost 10 yards he overthrew his guy by. This is not the guy from a couple of years ago. 
right? I mean, I, I have no problem with Henry Columbi, who's got more wheels to him and can, you know, when the pocket breaks down, he can run and he can get you five-plus yards. Uh, this offensive line has issues, and I have no problem if, if this is the guy, Henry Columbi, the Utah State transfer who played for Matt Wells at Utah State, if that's going to be the guy that gets you where you need to be, I have no issues with that whatsoever. Uh, you know, this Tech team is not coming close to a Big 12 title appearance this year. So just do what you think is in the best interest of this program for this year and then also moving forward. And if that's Henry Columbi and it hurts Alan Bowman's feelings, well, he has not been the same guy the last, uh, you know, I know last year he was mostly hurt. But still, since Cliff Kingsbury left, he does not look like the guy who was here when Kingsbury was here. He just doesn't. And the defense is still struggling to mold together. Um a lot of grad transfers on this defense for Texas Tech. And to not have a spring practice or a, a full summer camp to get this unit to mesh, you're seeing that play out in real time. I thought it was weird, too, during the broadcast yesterday when they're talking about how Matt Wells is trying to use the transfer route like Chris Beard uses it with basketball. That is the dumbest analogy ever. Using the transfer market successfully with basketball which Chris Beard has done at Texas Tech, is a lot different than in football, okay? I, I, I'm sorry. That is just an absurd comparison to me. I couldn't believe the broadcasters were doing this. Like, well, look at what Chris Beard has done with basketball with transfers. Now Matt Wells is going to do that with football. That's not how it works. I mean, they're two completely different sports. You get that one big-time transfer in basketball who meshes with the team. You change the trajectory of the program. Unless it's a quarterback in football, which it rarely is, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it just doesn't. And, uh, you know, you've got a, a Texas Tech defense that gave up 516 yards and five yards per rush. But time of possession, I mean, you know, I feel for the defense because they were out there for 41 minutes yesterday for Texas Tech. 41 minutes they were out there for. They lost it 41 to 19. I mean, that is just, that is brutal. Absolutely brutal for Texas Tech. So I, I feel for them, but I think there's a quarterback battle brewing at Texas Tech, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. No problem at all. I'm Pete Mundo. Heartland College Sports Weekly is the show. HeartlandCollegeSports.com is the site. Uh, we're on Facebook Live right now. We're on Periscope. We are on, uh, of course, we'll be on YouTube on the podcast as well. All right, let's get to the game that many of you want to talk about, just going through our comments on Facebook Live and also on Periscope. Let's get to Kansas State and TCU. All right. When are we going to start showing Kansas State some love? On the road, nine-point dogs, and taking care of business against TCU 21-14. to K-State is 3-0 and in the Big 12. They also are probably... Uh, a loss away or a win away against Arkansas State, who they lost to in the first game of the season, from being top 15, top 20 in the country right now. Uh, they've got to be kicking themselves over that. But either way, they go on the road without their starting quarterback. Skylar Thompson, of course, was out for this game. And Will Howard, so if you were to just look at the box score, you would say Will Howard, 8 of 19, 117 yards, no touchdowns, one pick. You would say, hey, you know, they won despite Will Howard. No. I, I thought, all things considered, Will Howard did what he had to do. There were a couple of drops that weren't his fault. I was generally impressed by Will Howard. He had 86 rushing yards. Now, one of those came on that big 80-yard run, so it's a little bit skewed, of course. But I thought that Will Howard was, was, was a OK. I was impressed by his poise, by his vision, by his ability to, you know, dink and dunk when he had to, get the job done. Uh, I, you know, I had no problem with the game for for Will Howard. For a freshman in that spot on the road in conference play, first start of his career, I I I was not at all upset with Will Howard's play. Now, of course, I'd rather have Skylar Thompson there, but uh, still, I, I was I was okay with Will Howard. Now, you need Skylar back if you want to win a Big 12 title or, or be the crashers of the Big 12 championship. You got to get Skylar back. But this Kansas State team is young. It is a young team, and Chris Kleiman, I, I put this on Twitter last night, at Heartland underscore CS. Chris Kleiman last week signed a, a, a six-year extension through, I think it's 2026, uh, $23.5 million, and a week later, it looks like a steal. You've got to feel so good about things right now if you are Kansas State, and a party has got to be saying, Bill who? 
uh, uh, who's the stadium named after again in Manhattan? I mean, seriously, that's that's how much Chris Kleiman has been a home run hire for this program. You could not have found a better guy stylistically, personality-wise, that's a better fit for this program than Chris Kleiman is for TCU. It is so impressive to watch. So impressive to watch. Uh, so let's get to some of your comments on this game, but let me also chime in. There's a couple other notes I wanted to run down on the Kansas State game before I got to some of your comments and questions and whatnot. Kansas State have fewer total yards, first downs, and minutes of possession than the Horned Frogs and still won the game. They would just say, you know what, we're going to be a bend but don't break defense, no pass by TCU longer than 15 yards, and you're starting to see some guys just step up for K-State. Justin Gardner, one of the D-backs for K-State, a transfer from Hutchinson College, started his career at Oregon State. They've got some big D-backs. This dude's 6'2", 190. Great length, great reach, and and it's guys like that who are making a difference for this team this year. It's a really unique combination of guys, and right now, for my money, it's one of the most fun teams to watch in the entire conference. Entire conference, one of the most fun teams to watch. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here I wanted to run down on this game? I don't know why Duggan got taken out of the game for Matthew Downing. Uh, Duggan was pissed when when Jerry Kill benched him for Downing. I didn't get that. Duggan's not the problem with this team. He was 19 to 31, 154 yards. Downing was unimpressive, had the pick six. The offense still remains a concern uh, for TCU. Maybe it's more that last week against Texas said a lot about the Texas defense than it did the TCU offense. But I believe that Max Duggan can be a you know easily top half of the Big 12 quarterback here. He, he was getting blown up yesterday. Some of that was his fault, but a lot of that wasn't. Uh, on Facebook Live, when Duggan has time, he could be the second best quarterback in the Big 12. But until that O-line improves, he's going to be lucky to play the rest of the season. I agree. I agree with that comment there, Zach. Uh, you know, Doug and I, I believe, you know, I have been really impressed with his ability to get the ball down the field. Um, his, his throwing game, his passing game has improved dramatically. And I've seen that, you know, firsthand. I've really been impressed. He couldn't get the ball 15 yards downfield accurately last season. He can do that this year. Uh, on Periscope, moving A.J. Parker to nickel was a brilliant move by Klanderman and Kleiman. I'll tell you what, Klanderman, the new defensive coordinator, replaced uh, Scotty Hazeltine who took the job at Michigan State, I was nervous because, you know, I didn't know, obviously, Klanderman, and, and a lot of us didn't. I didn't know what to expect. I thought Scotty did a great job last year for this defense. And I was like, oh, here we go, K-State. They can't keep their, their stars in the coaching staff. This is going to set them back. It hasn't. And you know what? It's been a harder job this year for Klanderman because he's got a lot of new faces on that defense. A lot of new faces on that defense. No doubt about it. Tyler, uh, K-State did a great job hiring and hired Kleiman at the right price to give them the ability to extend right away, unlike some programs that spend too much un up front, cough KU. Uh, maybe so, Tyler, maybe so. That's a good point. Pete, TCU should have ne never put in downing stupid interception. Yes, absolutely. Pete, you're biased towards Iowa State. I ripped Iowa State for losing to Louisiana for five minutes. Uh, but let's be honest, Iowa State's looking really good. And if you were to say right now who's in the Big 12 championship game, we've got a couple of you predicting OU and Iowa State. That wouldn't shock me. That, that wouldn't shock me right now. Would that shock you? It shouldn't. It shouldn't at all. I mean, I, why? I don't, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. But uh, Pete, TCU's in Texas. How can they not find a quarterback? My goodness. I know. And you know what? They've been recruiting them. What, Sean Robinson, uh, who was the five-star guy that blew out his knee his senior year that ended up transferring from the program? I mean, it's been just a tough string of bad luck. I think Duggan's the quarterback. I believe he can be. But he's got to get an offensive line that can protect him, and right now he doesn't have that. That's, that's the big problem right now as I'm looking at it for TCU. So Horn Frogs, the defense is going to be there, but they've got to figure out who the heck's going to protect Danny or who's going to protect Duggan? Because if not, he's going to be taking a lot of hits, a lot of hits. I'm Pete Mundo. Heartland College Sports Weekly is the show. HeartlandCollegeSports.com is the site. You guys are awesome. Don't forget about MyBookie.com. Use the promo code Big Twelve. Get a 100% sign up bonus right when you deposit. We're we're 14 and four on the picks against the spread this year. Who else is 14-4 and four against the spread? 
I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's going to keep up, but we were 2-1 and one yesterday. We are rolling on the picks. So get in at mybookie.com. Use the promo code BIG12. It helps out the site a lot. A lot. So, it, it, and, and you know what? You put in 100, you get 100 off the bat. Use it for college games, the NFL, whatever you want. Uh, they are great partners of this site. So please do check them out. We appreciate you guys. And uh, any comments, questions throughout the week, don't forget, if you're watching this on Periscope or Facebook, we do podcasts middle of the week. Go wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, anywhere else, and go subscribe right now. If you're on the podcast, leave us a rating and a review. We've got free Heartland College Sports koozies for you. When you leave us a rating and a review on the podcast and send me a screenshot to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O, at heartlandcollegesports.com. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Have a, a great rest of your Sunday, and we'll be talking with you throughout the week right here on Heartland College Sports Weekly. Take care, guys.